Hello and welcome back to OK at Home DIY. If you're new here, my name is Zena. I have some awesome patriotic DIYs for you. I'm starting out with these three bandanas from Dollar Tree. They come in packs of two, so you're going to have to buy two packs. These baseballs that are plastic, Mod Podge. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to cut up this bandana. And so I fold it in half and started cutting and I'm like, this is a lot of cutting. So I got through a couple strips and I was like, how in the world can I do this quicker? So I decided to fold it in half again and cut it. This actually went by very quickly. Um, but I will show you or tell you that you have to be very careful because sometimes those fold lines can get kind of wonky. So just kind of hold it pretty steady. So then um, your pieces can come out pretty good and straight so they don't have to be super straight because these are going to fray and these are going to look wonderful but um so i originally cut these up these bandanas up to cover these cool little baseballs we're going to make them into decorative orbs and i've seen this on pinterest where they've taken bandanas and it looks so cute but the problem with these bandanas is that they are made out of polyester and I was not getting this to stick to this plastic ball with this mod podge very well. So on to plan B. I had some cotton that I ate just a scrap piece of cotton around. I actually took it from an old dress and I just took a little small piece off and decided to put it on the ball to see if the cotton just stuck a whole lot better. And it did. Cotton is so much easier to mod podge with. So I'm just taking this small piece of fabric, cutting that up and well, actually I just kind of cut the ends and then I rip it to the, um, off the whole material. And that gives me kind of like a, a raggedy look. And I am covering this whole baseball with the white cotton here. And what I decided in all three of my orbs that I'm making is I'm going to have a top and a bottom to this orb. So the bottom is where I'm putting all of my ends to all my strips of cotton, white cotton here. And I also try to um, kind of make that top part loop over the top of the ball in a kitty corner or a random kind of pattern crisscross all the way around till the whole ball is covered with this cotton yarn and I keep on making sure my ends get fresh Mod Podge um, to glue them down so they don't come popping up later on. And Actually, with this one, as I ended up covering the whole thing with Mod Podge at the end and set it on a jar to dry. So this next one orb that I'm making, I am making with this blue and white gingham. This is material from Dollar Tree. This is like a cottony material. I just uh, tore some strips of fabric off of there, cut those in half, and then wrapped them around the ball to make a blue and white orb. So I am making all of these patriotic DIYs, red, white, and blue. So I just love it because you can actually use patterns and mix them together. I would love to have had my bandanas work out, but it's okay. I went ahead and found something else that would work. Maybe you have some stuff in your stash that would work as well. So when I was putting these on here, I just made sure the ends got a good extra coat and I crisscrossed them as well. So for my third color is red and I am just using an old t-shirt. If you would like to pick up things from Dollar Tree, I know Dollar Tree has t-shirts and towels and tea towels and all sorts of bags that you and even scarves that you can use. And here's how that turned out. I just love it. I'm participating in the Heidi Sambal DIY challenge. She does this every other month and this month was summer themed and for me nothing is more summer than the 4th of July. So I'm sharing with you my 4th of July DIYs and the rules were to make one or more. I will link the playlist down in my description and Heidi's channel as well. Now, the second DIY is super simple, taking those three tea light holders from Dollar Tree, and I am taking this napkin. I got a bunch of them in 
a package from Dollar Tree as well. And I just cut out the blue square from the napkin and I am just fitting it to the size of my tea light holder or my votive holder. These come in a pack. I want to say four of them or six of them. So you get six, four to six for a dollar. So it's pretty neat. Now I am just going to take my napkin and cutting it down to the size and I am going to Mod Podge that onto this tea light. I've seen this done with jars all the time, but I thought it'd be super cool to do it on a little candle holder. So I put that on there and I noticed my one end was a little kind of weird. So I went to adjust it and I ended up ripping a good chunk of that napkin off. So I thought, you know what, go with it. It's okay because the stars on the flag are a little small square of the flag as well. So I just went ahead and finished covering that with Mod Podge and I'm going to set that down upside down to dry. Now I am not going to use real tea lights in these. I am going to use um, the battery operated ones. So for that little blue square and for the rest of the red and white pieces here, I did remove that second or the backing to the napkin because it's a two ply napkin. And again, with my red lines here, I love how they're squiggly. So because they're kind of squiggly lines, I don't have to worry about giving them on this straight and it makes this craft go by super fast. So I get my, my red and white lined up and then I'm cutting that off of this napkin so then I can just get my next two jars that are just going to be striped and they're going to be the same size I'm trying to work smarter but I still also work hard so I mean I don't know exactly what that smarter work work smarter not harder I work I do both but anyways back to the craft so I wanted to make sure you saw how I flipped that around the edge of the napkin, the straight edge of the napkin was at the top because that made it look a little more finished off. And if I ripped it, I just kind of put it back over and um, bunched it up and I was able to kind of get away with that. After I got that wrapped around, I'm going to give it another layer of Mod Podge. So with the red and white stripes, I go ahead and go all the way around the tea light. I just gives it, I don't know, a dynamic. But if you want to Mod Podge all the way around the tea light with the white, with the stars. That would look good too. I just thought this was a neat take on Mod Podge and candle holders. So when this is all done, I put it off to the side. After they are all dry, I'm going to go ahead and move them to the mantle and put battery oper operated tea lights in them. And here's how they look. If you're new here, I just wanted to take a moment and invite you to subscribe. I like to do Dollar Tree transformations using all sorts of Dollar Tree and Dollar Store items. And I mainly transform them to the farmhouse style as well as I love to do woodworking. I'm very beginner at it, but I love to show you guys what I am making. I love trash to treasures and doing chic for cheap and look for less challenges and doing thrift store flips. So hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video and click that bell. So this DIY, I'm using the top of a windsock and it says land of the free and it has these three gnomes on it. And I thought it was too cute just to hang on a windsock outside. I needed to make a door hanger with it. So of course I am just cutting it out. You're going to get um, two pictures with this. There's a front and the back. So I'm just actually going to take one of them for this DIY and I end up just cutting it down and making sure all that red is off the edge where the blue and the red meet. And I kind of like cut a straight line above the land, kind of change the shape a little bit and brings kind of more of a dynamic to the eye. So this round piece is a round plaque from Dollar Tree and originally said family and it had kind of that two-tone paper on there. I went ahead and took off that paper and just painted it white with Waverly chalk paint. And again, I 
I am a part of the plaid community and so I like to use plaid paints and Waverly is a plaid paint so I absolutely love it. So I do the front and the sides one good coat. It's okay if some things some of that brown paper is poking through. Hit it with my blow dryer just to dry it quickly because you know sometimes when you're crafting you want to get on to the next step. Here again, I noticed that there were just some like angles that needed to be cut off and a little bit of that red just to make sure because it's going to come up and be noticeable against the white. I am going to make this look like a faux ship lap. I'm taking a painter's marker. You could take a Sharpie marker or whatever you like. And I'm tracing out the top and bottom of this ruler. My lines are going to be the width of this L-shaped ruler. I got this at Dollar Tree as well. Dollar Tree is selling some awesome tools in their little home improvement section that they have. So again, just doing my lines and I am figuring out where I want to place them, but I do not mod podge it down right away. I'm waiting for my lines to dry. So in the meantime, waiting for those lines to dry, I'm going to grab some ribbon, Dollar Tree ribbon, and this is the polka dot ones. And I cut four pieces, but I actually only needed three. So I'm trying to get them all the same size. And so what a crafter does, if she doesn't have the ribbon she wants, she makes it, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to make that ribbon into what I want it to be because I didn't have any patriotic ribbon. So I will show you that in just a minute. I'm going to Mod Podge this cute gnome picture down. And of course I start with the Mod Podge first and I just make sure I don't get too much on my edges because when that dry, it just looks like a blob of glue. So I make sure I get that all nice and um, the glue all nice and spread out and then I put my picture down all nice and centered and I Mod Podge right over the top of that. Now I did have some bubbles, I could hear it with my brush and so I kind of try to smush them out so but I ended up having to just lift my picture up a little bit and to get those bubbles out. I really don't know if I if that really helped or not because I did notice a little bit more bubbles but it all in all it turns out really cute and I decided just to Mod Podge it down and let that dry. Next I am going to take Admiral Blue from Apple Barrel which is a plaid paint. I got mine at Walmart and I will do my best to link my products down in the description box below. So I wanted red, white, and blue ribbon or patriotic ribbon and I just didn't have any and I wanted to get this done so I decided to paint the polka dots blue and red. So I really, really like how this turned out. Since the polka dots on this burlap ribbon are already kind of a paint, it was really easy to transform this ribbon and make it what I wanted it to be. So that was Admiral Blue and the red is a flag red. So when I joined the plaid community, they sent me a box of free product and this was in that box. And I am so excited to be able to use it, especially because it says it's flag red, right? And so it reminds me of my American flag. So I get all of those dots colored and then I'm going to put it to side to dry and then I'm going to dovetail. It probably would have been smarter to dovetail and then paint but that's okay. Now I'm not going to show you how I built my bow because it was so half off screen most of the time. It was such poor footage I just didn't even show you but I kind of squished them all together and I wrapped the middle with part of the wire from another piece of ribbon, just that edge wire to get it all squished together and stay together. And I'm just going to hot glue that to the top of my sign here. And when I, when that cools a little bit, I decided that that ribbon keeps falling down over land of the free and I wanted you to be able to just see it just fine. So I'm going to tack them down with some hot glue and so that ribbon will not fall down where I don't want it to go anymore. 
After that, I'm gonna go ahead and tie some jute string through the hanger piece. There's a little triangle hanger on the back and tie it. And after that, I am done. And here is how this turned out. It's a really super quick DIY. So I am taking this lantern i purchased this at target like i don't know five years ago maybe and i'm going to go ahead and paint that but before i do i wanted to show you some options this jar from dollar tree would be a cool substitute kind of the same size and then i also have this old pickle jar would be a neat substitute as well. You can use any jar. So I'm going to take this lantern out and I am going to spray paint it white with Rust-Oleum spray paint. And that's it for the jar. I have two of these. One did have a chip, but that's okay. We're gonna hide it. So I'm taking these flowers from Dollar Tree. I wish I knew the names of these first bundle. I'm not quite sure um, what they are called, but they're neat and pretty and white. And then these are hydrangeas. So I am going to just simply take these flowers. I'm going to use the hydrangea for one of the vases and the other flowers for the other. I got these flags from Dollar Tree and then I think these smaller flags I purchased from Dollar Tree a couple years ago or from a dollar store. I knew I didn't pay more than a dollar for four or five of them. But these are the ones I saw at Dollar Tree recently. I just picked these up like a day or two ago. So if you want to use those that's great i'm going to be using the smaller ones just placing my flowers in my vase here and fluffing them up getting the taller ones in the center the shorter ones on the outside then all i do is stick my beautiful flags in the flower i just love this this is super farmhouse and of course i've seen this on pinterest for so many years and i just told myself this year i am going to do it so i love it and then here is how it turned out. And then here's the hydrangea. Okay, for the last DIY, I will now actually using these bandanas. And then this rope from Dollar Tree, if you take it apart, you can get kind of the same size as this uh, macrame cord. And so I am going to use the cord because it's thicker and I don't have to undo the rope. But if you would like to use all Dollar Tree products, that is an option. So again, this is how I am saving time and I would actually cut the tag off before you do this. But anyways, so fold it in half, fold it in half again. And I just start at one end using you know, cloth scissors or scissors you use for material. And I just start cutting about an inch strips wide and I cut them all the way across the bandana for the blue one and for the red one just finishing up here see my lines are kind of diagonal but that's okay they come out with the relatively same size and strips and once you get them where you want them you won't even notice so to make this banner i am taking it and looping it around my finger so i have a big old loop then i'm taking the ties and i'm looping them around the string pulling the ends through my loop and pulling it tight onto the string. This reminds me of the time, I don't know, a few years ago of making those tutus with the tool. I did that for my nieces and this is how I did it. So since the bandanas are all the same length, I didn't have to worry about getting things the same length. I just took them, fold them in half, put them around my thumb and my forefinger to make a loop picked up the string, wrapped the ties around the string, and then pulled the ends through my loop that I was holding, and then pulled it tight onto the string. This is how I'm making my rag bandana. Kind of reminds me of a little gypsy-ish. I just continued on in the red, white, and blue pattern until I ran out of a color and I couldn't go on any further. 
So to embellish this banner, I am going to use this USA hanging sign. I really thought this was so cool how each one of those were individual letters and so I am taking it apart. It's just stapled on the back and they come off so super easily and I decided to keep that bow and that burlap for another project. Not for today's video but for some video. And peeling off that red sparkly glitter, that's really not my style, and I was able to do that for all of the letters, peeling off that top layer of glitter paper. And you're actually able to really see that on the edge there to be able to just peel that off real super easy and quick. And um, after I was done with that, I will show you how I take this rest of this paper off because there's actually two types of cardboard and then so there's a more of a compressed cardboard underneath that um, re remaining paper. So I wetted that down just very lightly because this is cardboard and I wanted to paint it and I didn't want it to be too wet. And I used this scraper from Dollar Tree and it really worked. It takes the paper and the glue off so you're left with a nice shape of a letter. Um, I just wanted to show you again how I started it, how I took the um, paper and I just kind of rubbed my tool right up underneath it and it started to come off pretty much all in one piece. And I love how that is. But if you don't have this tool and you have an old gift card, that will work just as well. And I'm kind of one of those, if you have something that works, why go spend money on a tool? And of course, I did that for the letter S as well. So they're now all blank and ready to paint. So to make these farmhouse, I am going to make these white, painting them with white chalk paint, giving them one good coat, but not worrying about it being completely all the way covered. After I paint all my USA letters, I let them dry. And then I come back and just trace the outside of each of the letters. And after that was done, I just take some of that chalk paint and go and fix any mistakes that I made. Next, I am going to be gluing on some paper clips to the back of my letters to hang them on the banner. So you just take that edge and turn it out so it's more of a hook. Uh, this is not my original idea. I saw this on another YouTuber or a Pinterest or somewhere along the lines I learned this. And then I'm just hot gluing that down to the S. The U got two and I try to make sure they were level. And here is my finished banner. Let me know down in the comment box what you think. Here's what the pieces look like all together on my mantle. I had so much fun making all of these for you. Please let me know which ones you like the best down in the comment box below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. And until the next time everyone, you have a good one. Bye.